If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where Corbin sits? On your mom's face. <laughs> Back to our stupid rags with the idiot son Corbin. He sits on your mom's face. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy It's content. so juicy. <laughs> and it's juicy. You can follow us on uh, Patreon for the Instagram account. Maybe both on Instagram. Why do I feel like there's some little kid who turned to their mom right now and went, Does he really do that, Mom? Yes, son. <laughs> uh, <laughs> today we were reacting to a video. It's called India is Becoming Its Own Silicon Valley. Oh, yeah. uh, that's absolutely. true. Yeah. We've already knew that, so yeah. we don't really need to, yeah, need to watch it. Sorry. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Uh, that was great. It's great video. Great video. video. Thank you. Uh, thank you for stopping by. Uh, this video is about how times have changed in India when NRIs are coming back to India to uh, become entrepreneurs and how Bangalore is becoming one of the world's next Silicon Valleys. Remember, I, I, I've heard about that. I believe uh, that is correct. Uh, one, it's cheaper. Uh, and so, but India is obviously taking advantage of that. Right. Most tech companies have some, something like they have some, uh, uh established, uh, part of their business in India. Right. Um, uh, because it's cheaper than it is obviously to do it in America. And a lot of the top engineering minds are in India are in already, India already, uh, because of, the, the importance that India obviously puts on that. Yeah, and there was, thankfully, it's expired now, but the former president had done a thing where he was stopping the entrance of the entrance of visas mm. of some of the engineers that would come who specialize in that kind of thing because there was this fear it was taking away from American jobs because, you know, it always makes sense to give jobs to less qualified people just because they're American. It's kind of like giving jobs to people just because they're white, you know? Yeah, I've never heard of the previous president. Here we go. <laughs> Stereotypical Indian music. Good morning, all. So, what is telemarketing? Selling products over telephone. Social graces. What are social graces? Good morning. Thank you. You want to do the inbound call of me? You say? My name is Sayal. I'm calling on behalf of Elik. I'm calling you on behalf of Elik. My name is Asha. Have you ever been a telemarketer? How may I help you? Uh, we've done it. Good morning. Welcome to Dr. Wellness. My name is Krishna. How may I help you? Perfect. Straight up American accent. <laughs> this and is a call it. center in Bangalore. Call centers were among the first outsourced tech companies to appear in India. Yep. And they're still here. Uh, good morning, this is Krishna. How may I help you? Wow, straight up great. The location of BFW in Bangalore? Call center work has been outsourced from America to India for decades. But this call center is different. Hello? Because many of their clients are America. actually Indian. When we actually looked at the growth of India, there were a lot of domestic companies that were actually, you know, that were, uh, you know, growing. You decided to do just the domestic market, just companies that are in India. Correct. And that actually did wonders. The fact that Transact Global has found success by serving largely its own market is an indication of just how far the market has come. India's IT sector has evolved so far out of its call center beginnings that it's now a $150 billion industry. This is the corporate headquarters of Emphasis, one of the biggest IT services firms in all of Bangalore. Why did India emerge, and Bangalore specifically, as sort of the site for this kind of growth? We've always had in India a fairly large STEM population, right? We've had a history of mathematics and science and engineering and medicine. Back in the 80s, IBM was launching the PC, Microsoft was launching the desktop operating system, and computers were going mainstream. So there was an opportunity for the Indian talent to be taken to where the work was, which was the United States. As telecom infrastructure became more stable, mm -hmm. that led to this development of the offshore services. That provided a much faster way to write software, because if you can do it pretty much 24 hours a day. And then came Y2K. 
Hmm. What was the problem with Y2K that India had to fix? The problem was the Western world had written programs that couldn't handle 00 at the end. There was so How much do you panic make sure in 1999. The don't fail when they come across a 00. And that's the year 2000. That's the year 2000. Some members of Congress are worried that the computer glitch Some will lead to dangerous problems on the world's infrastructure. Out. That's when a lot of our Indian companies that were young and nascent showed the world they had the ability to fix problems and do it in a way that you can actually afford. And over the last 25 years, you know, this has kind of become a massive hub for global companies to build software that essentially runs the world. Indian tech workers are a worldwide phenomenon, with 850,000 entering the global workforce every year. A primary source for this talent are the country's 23 Indian Institutes of Technology. They're among the most competitive engineering schools in the world. The IITs were set up in the 50s as institutions for engineering, uh, education and research, modeled after MIT and Cambridge and other things. So this is India's sort of best and this brightest is, yeah. engineers. People get in here and after they finish their undergraduate, I mean, they're sought after by all kinds of companies, Google, uh, Facebook, the banks. What are the most sort of popular or more competitive programs? Computer science. Nerds. <laughs> Nerds that are part of the thing. A couple stupid babies in there for sure. These kids all scored the best on yes. the entrance exam, yes. Yes. right? So even better than everyone at IIT, these are the kids who are the best of the best. Yes. What is it like teaching them? Very exciting. <laughs> do you think one of these kids is gonna like maybe do something? Not one. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but it seems for some of these kids, their dream is no longer to work in the U.S. Instead, they'd prefer to innovate right here in India. There is an inherent sense of wanting to contribute to India's GDP and there's a lot of emphasis on entrepreneurship and starting on your own. This push towards entrepreneurship has become the primary That's focus cool. as basic software engineering skills are no longer enough. In response to this shifting landscape, a number of startup incubators have sprung up to nurture creative ideas out of mathematically built minds. Science and technology are the backbone of Indian education. But if you want to go from a back-end coder to a front office visionary, you got to learn how to sell. So I've come to an incubator for startups called Commencement, which coaches would-be disruptors in the art of the pitch. How important is the pitch? Pitch is the moment of truth. Just having an engineering degree is not enough. If you're going to build the business builders and the job creators of tomorrow, they have to think about the world as a market. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon to you both. We are coming from a company uh, called Oshio Water. Fix my gadgets. Night of bag, change pick. Uh, you know, a lot of gadgets are getting introduced to India. Okay. So how we, uh, how we, uh, how we are actually, we are creating a basically a customer convenience through uh, this web portal. We'll just go through a video walk to where you can understand how to pay using change pay. Welcome to Paradise Hotel. I would like to stay here for two days. Sorry, I don't have money. Do you accept change pay? Yes. Yeah, we'll have to work on that. You do this all the time, right? Right. What is sort of common about the sort of shortcomings of how people tend to pitch ideas like this? Yeah, I think it's, it's uh, the big one is how do you tell a story? This is what you get from people who know too much. They've been an expert in delivering projects, making too many products details. in yeah. a very corporate environment. But I think we have to also come up with a solid business model which is innovative. Hello, uh, I'm from Music Money Labs. I'm Gopal. We are a music technology company that teaches scales music education. It works very simply. I mean, you just put it in front of you and you start singing. And it tells you if your frequency is off mm -hmm. or if you're off the beat. We show you detailed breakdown of how can you improve and you can track your progress over time. Even in India, you have so much diversity in music. And my motivation is to build a digital infrastructure for the Indian heritage. This is cool because that's sort cool. of like very, very culturally Indian things becoming potentially like a globally a digital useful product. For but the also, Indian it heritage. takes a non-music person to cool. figure it out a new way to do music. To do music. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it didn't take a very social Zuckerberg to figure out the social network. Right. 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 So exactly. He's got the stars in his eyes, as you can see. <laughs> for many of these would-be entrepreneurs. 
The hope is to one day join the fast-growing list of Silicon Valley-sized success stories who make up much of India's nascent venture capitalist culture. I'm at a golf club in Mumbai, and I am playing around with one of the top VCs in the country. He's been named one of the 50 most influential business people in all of India, and he's funded some of the most successful online ventures that this country's ever seen. So what was your big, like, first success back in India? Nice. nice Good. I was sitting in my office, met one of these sort of fellows uh, who does the traditional matchmaking. Or like arranged marriages. Yeah, it occurred to me that why not put this stuff up on the internet? And so that idea was born and we started out with Shali.com. Yeah, there you go. What were the next investments that you made? About 2011, I met a young guy called Bhavish and he was looking at raising some capital for an on-demand cap service mm -hmm. through your app. And so I wrote him a check in 2011 and today, of course, the company is worth close to $5 billion. Wow. Would you say that the tech scene in India is at an inflection point in any fashion? Indians have tasted blood, and given the cultural advantages that India has in many ways, I think it's a foregone conclusion that Indians will drive the coming tech revolution. You're already seeing it. As India's tech sector grows more that. sophisticated, its entrepreneurs are becoming more ambitious, driving development aimed at saving our lives and the environment. Oh, wow. I'm in like an operating room. Yeah. Oh, I can actually like, see my arm. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's, it's brown because we're in India. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's great. You can do the complete advanced cardiac life support protocol. And you really feel that you're doing it. Oh, what? oh my God. That's a thing. That's a real thing. <laughs> that's a real thing. Yes, yes. That's amazing. While many technology companies wow. here are focused on serving the world's economy, I come to the garage of Alti Green a startup that's trying to take a hands-on approach at solving some of India's problems. In India, there are 1.2 million people dying early every year because of poor air quality. So what do you guys do? We allow people to take their existing vehicle, bring it into our place, convert it into a hybrid Aha. at $1,000, saving 25% in fuel and 25% in emissions. I mean, are you trying to come to America? <laughs> No. Tesla is still selling $100,000 cars. That doesn't work for India. What we're doing here is we're democratizing the use of electric technology. Amazing. That's Entrepreneurship is exploding here, with over 5,000 verified startups currently operating nationwide. Projections are so good, in fact, that the blue chip prospects who originally left India to succeed in America are beginning to return. I understand that most of you guys studied in the U.S. or lived in the U.S. at some point. And so, like, why did you come back? Look at populations in India, right? We are building something that could potentially be used by a billion people. And it's a lot like the wild west. The rules are being made. Bangalore is very, very cosmopolitan now. There are people from not just all over India, but from all over the world. People who lived abroad and come back. Uh, I had a job offer in Tris from Google New York, but uh, I met some really nice people in Bangalore that time and I thought that why not give it a shot. So you gave up working at Google to come back and do a startup. Over. Given wow. sort of the increasing amount of wow. anti-immigrant feelings in the United States, did that contribute to your decision to move here? You know, Trump coming to power has not been good for anybody. And I think that is correct. I agree with you. Uh, the pro. Well, guys, to Bangalore, we're coming home to make it something happen. To many, the future of technology doesn't lie in Silicon Valley, but in places like Bangalore. Recent evidence suggests that this is already happening, as emerging economies like India's make up almost 60% of global GDP, according to the IMF. Opportunities abound. Software, where all the value addition lies, is now our calling card as a country. Bangalore is a city primed to emerge as a global leader in tech with its nation's investment in education and innovation paving the way for a potential overthrow of Silicon Valley as the center of the tech universe. I think Bangalore would ever overtake Silicon Absolutely. Valley as the center of engineering production. Yeah, but Good. what Bangalore's got going for it is the scale of India. It's like one billion It'll people. It'll be much bigger. Right? So even if you got like one out of 2,000 being engineers, right. you got a large population to pick from. Yeah. While the US and Europe continue to be the leading spenders, the center of gravity of the global economy is seen to be moving east. 
How did you guys like found companies? When I was 10 years old, I was very curious in electronics and technology. So I developed a drone which can detect and destroy landmines. Dang. Cool. <laughs> Consequently, Asia will account for at least 25% of global ER&D spend before the turn of this decade. And that defines the age that we live in. And I want to congratulate all of you who have made this possible. The fastest growing segment in the entire IT BPM industry. Absolutely. Yeah. 100% believe that. And I, I, I would have believed it even before I saw the video. I, yeah, I, I would too. And I think it's... Silicon Valley will always be known as the place where technological innovation was born. Mm -hmm. But... I believe the future of it is absolutely going to be here, just in the same way that like cinematic innovation began here. Mm -hmm. But it's no, it, and it'll be it'll be very quiet. There'll be a lot of people in America who think Silicon Valley is still the central point, mm -hmm. and when they actually look at it, they'll realize, oh, it's bigger in India, just like motion pictures. Yeah, um, and it, it makes sense because obviously the importance that India has put on education, specifically being. An engineer, mm -hmm. especially a computer engineer, mm -hmm. um, for and obviously that does also come with some problems with the pressure that a lot of people do yeah. get put on. Yeah. Um, but you just have all the great minds. Like I have a, a my brother in law. He's a, he's a doctor. I think he uh, he might be an anesthesiologist or something in that range, right? Right. Uh, and he said uh, we were talking one day. I'm like, you have a lot of Indi Indians. I'm sure you work with. And he says, yeah. In, certain, in every industry, there's underrepresented um, um, uh, people. Uh, uh, and he's like, in doctors, Indians are not one of the underrepresented people. Correct. <laughs> and that also goes for engineering. And, yeah. Because and, uh, the importance that they've placed as a culture Correct. on being a doctor, an engineer. Just, and so they're just good at what they do. They, their minds think in technology. And think te technology, math, and science. Yeah. And... Man, let me tell you, that idea for the conversion of an engine to be a hybrid for only a thousand bucks for any engine, that is spectacular. Because he asked him the question and it's an absolute answer. When he said, is this your way to compete against Tesla? And he said, of course not. Nobody here can afford a Tesla. They're still selling their cars for $100,000 a pop Yeah, for a basic Tesla. Yeah. And you got to wait two years. Yep. No, that's not the answer for the common vehicle, especially in India where... It, it is an issue. I love that invention. I also love the app. I guess it's an app or whatever the programming is for the music oh, instruction. Oh, yeah, that was really cool. Love that. Uh, yeah, really great. Vice usually always does really good, uh, good stuff. They're a good channel. Uh, uh, they do a lot of in-depth, like, either documentaries or stuff like that. I like them a lot. But yeah, this was great. Great video. Great video. Uh, and uh, if you were in this video... Let us know down below. I'm sure there were yeah. a couple stupid babies. Yeah, and so, or DM us on Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. Let us know. Hey, us, we were in that. We were in the Vice video. Let us know down below. <laughs> Look, <laughs> <laughs>